soil moisture sensors. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the baseline S100 soil moisture sensor that you can add to any existing irrigation system. I'm Sprinkler and Andy, you're watching Sprinkler TV. All right, so I'm gonna start this video by telling you that we at Sprinkler Supply Store, me, probably know more about this particular soil moisture sensor than almost anyone in the world. And the reason is because I used to work for this company, Baseline, before starting Sprinkler Supply Store in 2010. I was a national sales manager, regional sales manager for Baseline when the company was first getting started. And I have continued to do consulting work for the company uh, in regards to uh, technology consulting, specification, working with contractors on training, engineers. And this little soil moisture sensor is oftentimes forgotten and not talked about enough. So in this video, we're gonna take it out of the box and I'm gonna show you the parts and pieces and we're gonna talk about you know, what it does, how it does it, and how you can benefit from it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip the camera over. It's up, upside down, but uh, actually looking at it, since you open the box this way, I'm gonna have to tell Baseline, they need to put their sticker on the other way. So. Let's go ahead and open it up. Let me move my AirPods out of the way. There are two pieces that come with the Baseline S100. The first piece is the receiver. This is the device that you hang next to your irrigation controller, similar to mounting a wireless rain sensor. Then you have the soil moisture sensor and some instructions. You're definitely gonna need these for set it, setup and programming. Okay, let's... Uh, let me show you these a little closer. This is the receiver module. And what's really cool, you see two buttons there on the uh, next to the screen, wetter or drier. And really that's kind of the beauty once you get automating with soil moisture sensors is you can take, you know, as Chris Wright, their VP of sales says, you can think outside the start time. You can think outside the run time because once you get it set up, you're just gonna tell the system, I wanna be a little wetter or I wanna be a little drier, and that's gonna move your set threshold up or down, okay? So that's the receiver unit, and there's some little LED lights. I'll point out, of course, this is not wired up, but you see where it says dry or allow? If that light is on, that means your soil is dry and the system's going to be able to water. So we're gonna come back to that statement here in just a minute. Next thing I'm gonna show you is the actual soil moisture sensor. And this is a fiberglass blade that is not susceptible to salts and fertilizers and corrosion in the soil. It uses TDT technology, which stands for time domain transmissibility. And let me see if this will actually show. If you look at the board, you can see the wire path that's embedded inside the sensor and a pulse of electricity is sent down that wire path, kind of like a labyrinth. Actually, multiple pulses are sent down that wire path very quickly, essentially at the speed of light. And what happens to those pulses when they're sent at the speed of light is there's, um, for lack of a better word, refraction that happens off of the blade. And depending on how much moisture is surrounding the blade, those pulses travel at a different speed. Okay, so here in the open air, the pulse will travel very quickly and it will read zero moisture percentage, right? If we put this into a swimming pool where it's completely submerged and surrounded by water, those pulses will travel slower. And when they travel slower, then you can read the moisture. So you stick this in a swimming pool, you'll get about 35% what we call volumetric soil moisture percentage. There's no such thing as 100% uh, volumetric soil moisture because you have airspace and you have particle space. So it's impossible to have 100%. You can have 100% wet, but you can't have 100% volumetric soil moisture percentage, okay? So that's kind of the little nerdy under the hood how this device works. It's patented by Baseline. They developed this technology in the late 90s while they were working for Hewlett Packard. Again, nerdy inside knowledge, but uh, figured it was important to mention it anyway. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bury this in the uh, middle of a zone. Again, all this is in the instructions. I'm not out in the field. I can't show you where to bury it, but you're gonna bury it in the top one third of the root zone. And with turf grass, that is about the depth of a 
business card. So I just have a piece of paper here. This is the same size as a business card. So if we were going to be installing this outside, we would put it no further down than that. And that's because two thirds of the root mass, root math, mass <laughs> is in the top one third of the root zone. So you wanna put the sensor where most of the um, in this case, evapotranspiration is occurring and that's where the root mass is. So top one third of the root zone and you wanna put it in a good zone. One of the number one sort of mistakes with soil moisture sensors is they you put it in a spot that has a problem. You put it in the puddle hoping the puddle will go away. But if you put it in the puddle, now it thinks your entire landscape looks like a puddle, right? If you put it on the top of a berm where it's dry, then it'll think your whole site is dry. Okay. It's a lot like um, not having the thermostat in your house mounted next to the oven because it'll think your whole house is hot all the time, right? Not having your thermostat mounted next to the front door. Otherwise, it'll think in the wintertime, it's always cool because your front door is opening and closing. So you want to put the salt moisture sensor in a good zone that represents the rest of the landscape, which is typically flat, good sprinkler coverage and exposed to the sun. Okay. And from there, that becomes sort of your... Uh, what baseline calls your primary zone. And then you're gonna link all the other zones to it with more or less runtime based on where you install the sensor, okay? So again, my job today is to show you the device. I'm not telling you everything that there is to know about it, but uh, we are getting a little bit technical, which is always kind of fun. And then you see it comes with, um, I should know this, it's either 25 or 50 feet of wire. Comes with wire because you're going to wire this sensor to an existing valve. Okay, you're gonna put it, um, I don't think I have a valve here. You're gonna connect it to the solenoid, okay? So on the end here, I should have split this, but you have a red and a white wire. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you can see that. You have a red and a white wire, and the white wire is going to go it'd be connected to the common side of the valve splice, and the red wire is going to be connected to the hot wire side, whatever color that happens to be. And then the way that this works is the sensor can talk to the receiver over the existing wire path. So instead of having to be limited by a wireless range, or be limited by running a brand new wire from the controller all the way out into your landscape, these two devices will talk to each other over the existing wire path using something called two wire technology or decoder technology. And um, it's all in the instruction manual, but you're basically going to connect one of these wires to the valve that the sensor is attached to, and the other side you're going to interrupt the common with so that these two guys can talk to each other over the existing wire path. And then if there's enough moisture, you'll suspend the irrigation because it's interrupting the common. So this is also known as a common interrupt. It doesn't get connected to <clears throat> the sensor terminal on the controller it actually gets connected to the common and then the common gets connected back into the common so it's interrupting the common okay so that is the sort of 10,000 foot view of how it's installed put it onto the landscape in a good reputable zone connect it to the valve splice and then it communicates back over the existing wire path to the receiver so that these two devices can collect the data from the field send it back to the controller all right so next up let's talk about how it works the uh, S100 soil moisture sensors, what is referred to as a lower threshold device, okay? It will keep the system off until it is dry enough, okay? That's what lower threshold means. Lower threshold means dry. Upper threshold would mean wet, okay? And you, uh, you can auto calibrate this, again, okay? all the... Um, Instructions for that are in the manual. Recommend an auto calibration cycle, and that's what it's essentially going to do is overwater your sprinklers or water your sprinklers uh, with a bucket test, and then wait 24 hours like a perk test. Watch the uh, soil moisture dry out to learn where the lower threshold should be set. And when it does that, it sets the threshold and it'll keep the irrigation system off until it dries out to that lower threshold. And what's important to know about the lower threshold is the recommendation is between a quarter inch and a half an inch of runtime. Okay, so every time your irrigation system runs, meaning every time it's dry, it'll run for the very same amount of time. Okay, so if your grass, if you water and you don't think it's enough, you're going to want to adjust your run times so that you can water between a quarter inch and a half an inch for every cycle. 
Okay, and then it's going to stay off until the moisture dries out enough. And once it reaches that lower threshold, then it will be allowed to water again. And when we say allowed to water again, that means when it comes time to run, it won't be interrupted anymore. So the other key part of this is to set your controller schedule to water every day of the week. You might be thinking, why would I set it to run every day of the week? I don't need it to run seven days a week. And that is absolutely true. But the reason we want to set it to run every day is because if it's today and today happens to be Friday and it's about 2.30 p.m. Eastern as I'm recording this, if it goes dry now, it's not going to come on immediately. It's going to wait for the next scheduled start time. So you want to have it able to start every day if possible. So if it goes dry today, tomorrow at 5 a.m., it will be allowed to water. Then it will water. The next scheduled start would come the following day and say, is it dry enough? Yes or no? Cool. It's still wet. Waits another day, waits another day. So it waits for it to dry out to that lower threshold. Then it'll come on on the next scheduled start time. So. This is a great device for conservation. It's a great device for simplicity. If you think that your grass is too dry, all you have to do is increase the, uh, the wetter button and that'll raise the threshold. So it waters more often. Okay, instead of watering two or three times a week, maybe you need to water four times a week. So when you raise that lower threshold, you're not allowing it to dry out as frequently. So it waters more often. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. There's probably not a lot I can tell you here without sort of digging a hole and showing you how to install it. But if you have any questions about baseline products or this specific soil moisture sensor, you want to give one a try, feel free to contact us. I'm happy to chat with you about how it works. And uh, you can reach us by phone, chat, email, text message. Until the next Sprinkler Supply Store product overview. Happy sprinkling, my friends. We'll talk to you then.